Hello and welcome to the 383 User Lab where we take a close look at some popular digital experiences to figure out how they work, how they help real people get stuff done, but also how they might be improved. In today's video, we're going to look at the frown inducing subject of digital finance. So grab something highly caffeinated and let's jump right in. Managing your finances is sadly part of everyday life, but it's often seen as a bit of a chore and pretty mundane. It's not sexy, but like rollerblading or navigating around an Ikea, if you can get used to it, then you'll find life a lot easier. When we took a closer look, we discovered that most people's tasks boil down to just a handful of fundamental things that they're trying to get done, like simplifying their finances and saving more efficiently, understanding how they spend their money and sticking to a budget, being able to pay people and keeping track of your own balance, and then more specific needs, like being able to easily get hold of financial advice when they need it, and getting more personalised recommendations about how they might make more of their money. Now, taking a look at some of the banks that have been around for a while, with a lot of apps having been evolved and added to over time, it can be very difficult to introduce new functionality and features to an already aging and established platform, especially those that date back years. But if you quickly just scan the reviews of apps from some of the more traditional banks on the App Store, you'll begin to see frustrations beginning to emerge, especially where popular features available elsewhere are just missing, or the app itself is still really mired in financial language and a maze-like structure. So how are these new challenger banks and services revisiting what banking really means with more humanized utility and not just banking? And do we think the older, bigger banks can keep up? Now, at the top of the list is a little bit of a no brainer. If you've not heard of Monzo before, you've either just come out of stasis from the past five years or you're just far too young to even feed yourself yet. Monzo has become a fairly well-known challenger bank because of the way that they simplify your finances using a really friendly way to display your recent expenditure, notifications for things that are yet to happen like bills and your salary, as well as intelligent change jars that let you round up your payments and gradually save the difference. It's hard to fault Monzo, especially considering that they're not perfect. They're just really good at fessing up when they've made a mistake and putting it right for everyone to see. Plus they have a really nice happy coloured card, which is nice. Now, next up is Yolt, and Yolt is a little bit different in that it's not a bank per se, but more of a better way of keeping an eye of wherever your money is using open banking. You can see your current account, savings, credit cards, pensions and investments all together in one place. What's also nice is how you can set goals, with the app helping you to save and keep a detailed track of wherever your money is going, using things like smart deals on bills and with brands where you spend most of your money. Now last on our list is something a little bit different. It won't show you your balance on login unless you ask it nicely. And will happily give you grief if you start to get a bit cocky. Now Clio is an alternative take for providing an intelligent interface for your money for people who just hate logging into a list of the stuff they probably shouldn't have spent their money on. It's purely a chatbot for your cash, but the beauty of the app is in its simplicity. While Clio does all the rest of the stuff you'd expect an open banking dashboard to do like personalised budgets and spending breakdowns, budgeting tips and help with the bills, it does it through understanding the things you're asking it and responding to you appropriately, which actually can be quite hard for a lot of banks, even when you're talking to a human in the first place. But what about the older and more mature banks? We spoke to Steve Thomas from HSBC to understand how they differ and the challenges that they face. I actually think one of the the biggest challenges that large organizations have, and it's the same in every sector, not just banking, is as, as your industry is disruptive, as new experiences come out, for you to, to be able to keep pace with that, you have to change how you're thinking. And I think the larger you are, the harder it is, frankly, mm -hmm. to change how your collective corporation is thinking. I think you've got to get to a point where customers can do what they want to do in the channel they want to do it. And there's absolutely no doubt that that is mobile. But I think that also what you tend to find is by us improving digital services and digital capability, you're actually engaging more with customers and they're engaging more with their money. But that's quite a different thing to go and actually, now that I've got a digital user interface that I can use instead, what's a better way to, to sort of display someone's financial transactions in a way that might be easier to digest, quicker to understand, like all of a sudden though you've got these options you never had before but i think you've got to you've got to cotton on to the fact that there's another way of thinking about this and and that means 
thinking very differently, frankly, about how, you know, how people actually manage money as opposed to how your sort of traditional legacy um, banking products and services are set up. So what have we learned from the new breed of banks and banking services and also from the approach and concerns of the more established banks? Firstly, it's obvious that people want an honest and clear understanding of how they're spending their money, uncomplicated by jargon, sort codes and long lists of the same looking stuff. Simplicity is also key when navigating something that can very easily induce stress, like managing your money can. So ensuring any user can easily make sense of what they're looking at, understand what's being said, and then make an informed decision on what to do next is also pretty important. But listening to Steve and considering how some of these interesting disruptive features can make a difference comes down to just that. They have to be more than just a clever categorization of your spending and more helpful in terms of the actions you can take to improve your account or just be able to easily talk to a human being to help make sense of things. And finally, while the new blood of banking services do have more flexibility in delivering interesting features to their customers, the focus needs to perhaps shift to consider how we can then help these people make informed decisions based upon the information that we presented to them, as well as some of the less sexy stuff under the hood like helping tackle fraud. Now, just before we finish, I wanted to take on board some of the things that we've learned from new and old camps alike and try and see what happens when we incorporate some of these ideas into an already existing banking app. I've chosen to take a quick look at the one from Lloyds Bank, mainly because I've been with them since I was 10, but also because they've got some really useful functionality with a fair few things that match what we're seeing from the challenger services, but it's fairly hidden behind a few austere option screens. When you log into the existing app, you don't really get to see very much, just your different accounts, and then you have to dive into them individually. So what I wanted to do was add the ability to quickly swipe between these and have your account activity refresh dynamically underneath. Now this isn't rocket science, but it does give you a quick at a glance access to your expenditure, especially if you use things like recognisable icons and names for the things that you've been spending your money on. Another important addition is the ability to do more with your money based upon your activity with things like alerts for overspending that then help the customer manage their money better and more useful features that help with things like open banking and intelligent savings pots. All things that already exist within the service but that just need bubbling up to the surface. So there you have it. While the original app has nothing really wrong with it, all we've done is make it easier to navigate across accounts while allowing the user to then see a snapshot of their expenditure and easily do more things with their money, all from the home screen of the app, but without it being crowded or hard to navigate. Ultimately though, what will be the judge of these different services, old and new alike, is actually how they help make money. So the challenge now, as the older banks catch up, is how to make users pay for features that could essentially be expected as the norm. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight into some of the challenges facing digital banking and how some of the new blood services compare to the older, more mature banks. Join us next episode as we'll dive into another popular digital experience. And until then, take care and catch you later.